Hello and welcome to Nature Days Outdoor Learning Resources sponsored by the Gower Society. Now it is National Storytelling Week this week so my challenge for you today is to come up with a walking story. Now the way you do that is you go for a walk and as you're walking you use inspirations from the objects around you or what happens on your walk to create your own story. So I'm going to go for a little walk now and I'm going to tell you a story that I've made up as I go along using inspiration from what I find as I'm going on my walk. Once upon a time there was a little boy and his name was Robin and he lived at the bottom of a big hill. Now at the bottom of that big hill there was always a great big lake and the lake had ripples on it when the wind blew and it made it flow across the surface and he always wished that he could float along the surface of that lake. So one day he decided that he was going to try and pretend to be a skimming stone that would skim along the surface and then flow along like the water in the river that came out of the pond. So he grabbed himself a stone, picked it up and threw it into the lake. But it just stank like a stone. So he wondered whether it was the shape of the stone that was the problem. So he had a look round, try and find a different shaped stone. And he saw them that were different um, colours and some were flat and square and he started experimenting with them. And eventually he got one to skim across the surface. And he thought, well, if a stone can skim, um, skim across the surface, maybe I can too. But I need to, first of all, find something to be my boat or my stone. So he had a look around. He saw some huge stones, but he knew that they wouldn't do. They would just sink when they fell into the pond. Instead, he went into his house and he found himself a bodyboard. And that bodyboard was going to be his boat. But he knew that he couldn't throw himself into the lake. He needed to get up some momentum. So he wondered, how was he going to get enough energy so that he could fling himself into that lake and stay afloat by bouncing along the surface like the rocks he'd seen skimming across. And he remembered about the hill and he thought, if I went to the top of the hill with my bodyboard, then I could slide all the way down and then by the time I got to the bottom where the lake was I'd have enough momentum and speed and power to skim myself around. Now luckily the path was really really muddy and he knew that it would slide nicely underneath the bodyboard but as he walked up the hill to check out the route he realised that in the night a tree had fallen down across it. Now, would he make this an adventurous journey and try and slide underneath it maybe? Or would he have to clear it out of the way? Or find a better route? And the mud was getting thicker as he got up to the steepest part. And he did wonder whether it would get so sticky that it would suck him down and he'd be stuck on the slope with his bodyboard and wouldn't even make it to the lake. But he thought, ah, oh, it's so steep up here. I think I'll be going so fast when I come down that I will literally almost fly and slip over the top of that mud. So he continued all the way up and the hill got steeper and steeper and he wondered whether he would ever be able to make it down again 
without falling because it was so steep. Phew, that was lucky, said Robin. Nearly got taken away by that dog. He was very friendly though. Let's hope that when they go down the hill, they don't get too muddy and then we can follow their footprints as we go back down. Now at the top of the hill, he found a great big tower. And he thought, mm, is this gonna get in the way of my run down the hill? So he did his first run. He turned around at the top of the hill. He put down his body board. He sat on it and he pushed and down he went down the hill. But when he got to the bottom of the lake, he just quickly fell right in it and sank like a stone. So he had to think, well, when I skim stones, not only do I get thrown with great force across the water, I also got spun around. So back up to the top of the hill, what can we use that tower for? Then he had an idea. He went back to his house. He picked up the biggest sock he could find. It was enormous elasticated winter skiing sock. And he brought it up to the post. He tied one end to the post and then he tied the other end to the post. And in between those two ends, he put himself and his body board. And he then decided to twist himself around. So he twisted himself and the sock that he was attached to the post by once, twice, three times. And then he pulled back away from the post and the elastic of the post was getting tighter and tighter and he could feel the power holding him there as he held his feet on the ground, held onto the bodyboard, and then he jumped in the air. And as he jumped in the air, the power from the elastic spun him round and spun him round three times and then catapulted him down the hill. Whee! As he got to the muddiest bit, he pushed on the bottom of it, of the board, and he flew into the air over the fallen tree, spun 90 degrees, and then crashed back down onto the mud on the other side. Whee! Then, as he got to the bottom of the hill, as he hit the lake, he was still spinning around, and with all that momentum, he hit the top of the lake. And he bounced once, twice, three times, four times, five times, and made it across the lake to the other side. As he looked back across the lake, up the hill where he'd gone, he remembered that journey and the exhilaration he felt in his stomach as he landed and skipped across that water. What a fantastic fantastic way to start the day and as the sun rose up he went back home to tell his parents all about it. The end. So why don't you have a go at creating your own walking story or have a story walk. So when you go for your walk look at things in the environment that will either inspire you to put them into your story or give you clues as to what happens next. Now, if you're walking with your family, you can take it in turns to say next bits of the story. So one of you can say a bit and then leave it on a cliffhanger and then your friend or your family member can say another bit. You can take it in turns to say that story. So enjoy your walk, enjoy your story, and I'll see you again for our next Outdoor Learning Challenge.